And joining us now is Dr. Omar Awan. He's also a senior public health contributor for Forbes. Dr. Awan, it is great to see you. I want to break all of this down with you. I have so many questions, but let's just start with this. What was your first reaction when you heard about this plan to announce this potential link? Puzzled because the fact of the matter is, is that there are no studies that show Tylenol causing autism. Now, I know the HHS is citing certain observational studies that may demonstrate that Tylenol is associated with autism, and association does not mean causation. I mean, if we take a look at an analogous, analogous example of, you know, waking up early in the morning and productivity, you know, waking up early in the morning may be associated with increased productivity at work, but it certainly doesn't cause it, right? And that same may be true for Tylenol and autism. And furthermore, I think what's also important here is that there was a bigger study, a very big study done in 2024, published in JAMA, that followed actually over millions or two million kids, and that study showed no association, not even causation, no association between Tylenol and autism. So I'm a bit baffled and puzzled at what's going to happen, and I'm very curious to see what happens at 4 p.m. with the president announcing this. Yeah, Dr. Awan, we just heard in Haley's reporting there, the former chief medical officer with the CDC, who said that this evidence just didn't exist three weeks ago. So what kind of specific language or announcements will you be looking for or watching for once this, once this briefing gets underway? What should we all be watching for along with you? Well, I'm looking to see what the president or Secretary Kennedy say and what evidence they show. Are they going to cite observational studies or are they going to cite, you know, randomized double-blinded studies, which are, of course, gold standard? That would suggest causation. I'm looking to see, are they going to use the word cause or are they going to use the word associated? And I'm also want to see, is it President Trump that's going to say this or is it Secretary Kennedy? President Trump, you know, is arguably the most influential person in the world. If he were to say... Tylenol causes autism, that could have very negative rippling effects for public health, you know, particularly because Tylenol is so widely used for expectant mothers, pregnant mothers, and it has been deemed safe and effective for decades. I mean, decades of research has shown Tylenol to be safe and effective. So very interested to hear this news report, and it'll be very interesting to see who says what and what is being said. Yeah, and we already saw Tylenol, the name brand Tylenol, already make a statement. Uh, they say that they're worried about the safety ex of expectant mothers if, in fact, this is newly adopted guidance. And, of course, that is the name brand for, for the generic, which is acetaminophen. So what should pregnant women, if, if, this, if this becomes newly adopted guidance, I should say, what should pregnant women do instead of taking acetaminophen if this is all of a sudden something that people say, no, no, we can't take this? Well, I would say, listen, speak to your doctor, speak to your obstetrics gynecologist about this. You know, the ACOG, as Haley just stated, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology have said Tylenol is safe and effective. You should, you know, patients should be listening to their doctors and trust their doctors, not necessarily the federal government when they're not citing strong and rigorous evidence, right? So if you have a question, if you have a fever, if you have pain and you're pregnant, Talk to your doctor. That's what we do naturally, right, when we're sick. We go to the doctor, we go to the office, and they give us recommendations. It should be no different in this situation. And whatever your doctor says, if they can provide you evidence, you should go with that. You know, I suggest that we stick to evidence. Decades of research has shown that Tylenol to be safe and effective. And I don't treat pregnant females, but if I did, I would be very adamant about prescribing it to them because that's what the evidence and that's what research shows currently. Yeah, and we're going to talk to an OB uh, later on here this afternoon on Scripps News after we hear from the president. And and you, you hit on something there because we're seeing a lot of people in comments already on social media say, I have kids with autism. I didn't take acetaminophen. Um, and there were there have already been so many unfounded theories related to autism. What is it about autism? What is it about autism that is um, such a lightning rod for this kind of debate and back and forth? 
Well, autism cases are increasing. You know, now, you know, we're seeing a significant increase in autism now than we did maybe two decades ago or three decades ago. And, you know, quite frankly, I think there's a lot of reasons for this. One is we brought in the diagnosis for autism in the last 20 or 30 years. You know, now it's perhaps easier to be diagnosed with it based on the definition of autism and the broad category of how we uh, diagnose autism. The other aspect of this is that we're better at screening for autism. I mean, now you go to a doctor's office, you're pregnant, we ask a lot more questions. Doctors ask a lot more questions, which can then categorize you potentially as having a child with autism. But autism is a very complex disease. It's, there's not just one cause of autism. You know, our general understanding right now is that it's caused by hundreds of genes interacting with each other, certain environmental factors interacting with each other. So perhaps some anti-seizure medications could have some effect, whether or not Tylenol could have an effect, we don't know. And I think we need to do a little bit more research. But, you know, I think limiting autism to just one cause is a bit silly because we know that there are so many factors at play in diagnosing autism. Okay, so also part of this expected announcement is a potential therapy for autism. Have you seen any science to back that up that, that there's any kind of therapy or treatment? Well, the therapy they're referring to is leucovorin, which is a derivative of folic acid. This has traditionally been used to treat uh, cancers, like in chemotherapy regimens. Also, it can potentially treat anemia, which is low blood count. There is very scant evidence, Maritza. Scant evidence is the scant is the key word here that shows potentially leucovorin may have some role in the treatment of autism, but that remains to be seen. I think we need to do a lot more research before we can definitively say something like that. So. The answer is we don't know, but we do need to do more research to investigate whether, you know, leucovorin can have some positive effect on the treatment of autism going forward. So the big question I have, and I think this applies to pretty much everyone out there of all stripes, no matter who you believe, how do we know what to trust? People need to do research on their own, Maurice. I think we have to increase media literacy, factual literacy, taking a look at evidence, being able to critically analyze information, you know, not accepting facts at face value. And the evidence is very clear. I mean, if you were to go and look at decades of research, I can assure you, you will not find a study that shows that Tylenol causes autism. Not that I'm aware of. Maybe there's something that President Trump or Secretary Kennedy are going to show that I'm not aware of. But certainly all the ones that I've seen have not shown that. So I think it's up to everyone to look at the studies themselves and make their own determinations, make their own conclusions, and everyone has a right to do that. All right, Dr. Omar Awan, great to see you. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me, Maritza.